MyHeritage has some great tools for research, and one of them is their triangulation tool. So today, we're going to talk about how to do triangulation with MyHeritage DNA matches. Many people, when they first get into genetic genealogy, see these matches and they assume then that they must be related to every single one of those matches. And that is not exactly true. There's videos that I've done about false matches where you can learn how you can share DNA with somebody but not be a match to them. In other words, you're not actually related to them. However, there is a method called triangulation, which not completely, but pretty much guarantees that you and the people you triangulate with share a common ancestor because you each received that segment of DNA from that common ancestor. Let's go over what triangulation is so you understand what we're looking at. We start off with a match. Person A matches person B. And then we add a third person. And person B might match person C. So we know that person B matches A and C. And if we do a comparison with person C, they match person A. Now that is not the end of triangulation because we want to see that all three of these people match each other on the same segment. Not just share DNA with each other, but share the same segment of DNA. And that is what indicates that they, A, B, and C, are related through a common ancestor. That might seem simple, but sometimes it's a little tricky to do. So here's another way of looking at it with a triangle, is we need to make sure that all three of them match each other. And you can actually do this with four, five, six, even more people. The key is all of these people have to match each other on the same segment. So let's take a look at what we need to do to triangulate matches on MyHeritage. The first step is we want to download the segment list. There is a way that you can look at some shared matches to see if you triangulate, but if we wanna do this in bulk and try to figure out which all matches we wanna look at closer, we wanna download that segment list. On MyHeritage, if you're looking at the match list. There's three dots in the upper right hand corner. These are the three dots you want to click on and it's going to give you three options. The option we want is the middle one, which is to export the shared DNA segment info for all DNA matches. Click on that and it's going to tell you that, hey, we're going to be sending you this file. It might take a few minutes and it may. I've had it take as long as an hour before I receive this file. So just be patient it will get to you eventually. And we go on to step number two. We wanna take this file and we wanna sort it by chromosome, by start, and by end location. Now this file contains lots of other information. I've stripped out some of it. So I've taken out the names so that this is anonymized. I've taken out the SNP locations, the RS numbers, because that's not really needed. And I simplified the start and the end columns so that they're showing in millions as opposed to with all the numbers. I've now sorted this in my spreadsheet so you can see that, hey, this is starting at chromosome number one. Early on in the chromosome at 0 0.8 to 3.5, it tells me how many centimorgans as well as how many SNPs. So once I have done that in my spreadsheet, I am ready to start looking for segments. And that is step three. We wanna find the segments to triangulate. So what we're looking for is we're looking for at least three people who share a chromosome, a start, and an end location. Now, I start with this because if they all share the same chromosome, start, and end location, there's a good chance that they might triangulate. So let's take a look through this list, and I'm going to go to chromosome number 14. And from the start location of 21.6 million to 25.1 million, 8.4 centimorgans. I have three people that have that segment. So I want to take a look at that segment. Now you'll notice before and after this list of people, there are others that are also starting at 25.6 or even close to 25.6. And there's others that are ending at 25, near 25.1. So we're going to hold off on those. We want to start with just those that have the same start and end location and see if they triangulate. So now we have our list of people. 
we want to go to the MyHeritage chromosome browser. You can find that by going to the tools section or just seeing this chromosome browser and we want to explore that. Now with this, what we're going to do is we're going to put in our three matches or more matches. I usually start with, you know, two or even three matches and the person that we're comparing it to whose file that was. In this case, this is my grandfather. I use his research in a lot of these examples. And we click on the compare. And you'll notice on this one, with these three people, it's compared my grandfather to each one of these three, but it's also told us that there are no triangulated segments. Now, if we look down in the chromosome browser, we can clearly see on chromosome number 14 that there are segments there that line up but when my heritage was looking at each one of these other people compared to each other, there was not a match there. And so there is probably some DNA that is from my mother or father, or I'm sorry, from my grandfather's mother on one side and my grandfather's father on the other side. So that's why it doesn't triangulate. But we can go back and we can grab another set of matches. And this is actually the next little segment down below. And these three people, different three people from the first three, right though in the same area of chromosome 14, they all do triangulate. It says one triangulated segment. That's great. I found the first set of people that triangulate all together here. So now that I do have this group of people that triangulate, I can start to add in some of those overlapping segments to see if others triangulate in that group. What I've done is I have highlighted the three that I already triangulated. Now, these ones that were just above 21.6 to 25.1, they didn't triangulate, so I haven't highlighted them. But the 21.6 to 25.7, they did triangulate. And so I've highlighted them and I've labeled it as triangulation group A in this instance. And looking here, there are, hey, these four more that start at 21.6 and end, you know, 25.9, 26.6, 27.6, and in that same general area. So I want to look and see if these people triangulate. Now, since I know that triangulation group A is these three people, they all triangulate, I'm going to add these people in one at a time. Instead of showing you one at a time, I already have added all of them in one at a time and checked and all seven or all six or six of these triangulate. There was one that did not. So now I've expanded my group to not just have one triangulation, but I have multiple triangulations on this. So I've expanded that group to even more people. And I can continue to do that with other ones until I see how extensive this group really is. Now, the, again, going back to what triangulation is, it indicates that all of these people share a common ancestor. So I've created a cluster of people that I can look at together. I can look at their trees. We can copy each other on emails for our common research. If we have lines, we might be able to compare it back and identify who that common ancestor is. And if I do that, if I find a common ancestor for this triangulation group, that segment then came from that ancestor, which means in the future, as I'm searching for other segments of new matches, any segments that fall overlap that segment that triangulate with members of this group are from that same most recent common ancestor. And that's how we can start to use triangulation to help us identify unknown matches. And for people who don't know who their mother or father is, such as adoptees, if they fit into a triangulation group where you know, let's say where you know where the great, great grandfather is. Well, if that triangulation group received that segment from that great, great grandfather, that adoptee that is also part of that triangulation group has to be related to that great, great grandfather. And you have helped them with a piece of their puzzle. Now, if you would like to learn how to use a triangulation tool on another platform, then why don't you check out this video up here. If you want to learn something else about DNA, then check out this video down below. I hate the nose itches.